The first episode of Mayberry RFD aired on September 23, 1968, and America couldn't help but fall in love with the rural and simple life of the adorable father-son duo, Sam Jones and Mike Jones. Unfortunately, even after delivering three successful seasons, the show was taken off air when CBS indulged in Rural Purge in 1971 and canceled all shows with a rural theme, instead deciding to focus on shows like the Beverly Hillbillies that revolved around urban life. However, the American audiences missed the charm of a simple life and also simple but memorable characters. Thus, when Return to Mayberry aired on April 13, 1986 on NBC, it became the most watched TV movie of the year. Reunions and reboots are always tricky to pull off, but Return to Mayberry had creative geniuses at the helm. It was directed by Bob Sweeney, who had directed 80 episodes of The Andy Griffith Show, and was written by Harville Bullock and Everett Greenbaum, who had been the minds behind some of the most creative and funny Mayberry tales, such as The Pickle Story and The Mayberry Band. Sixteen of the original cast members came together for this made-for-TV romantic comedy film, and together they made this film the highest-rated film of 1986. In this video, we go back to television's greatest reunion and point out some things you probably didn't notice during your first viewing. Make sure you stick around until the end of the video where we'll look at how the show's most notorious characters seem to redeem themselves in Return to Mayberry. Facts First presents 9 Things You Missed in the Return to Mayberry Reunion Film. Before we get started, click the like button if you saw this film during its TV debut. And be sure to subscribe to Facts First and click the notification bell for more videos like this. The original set didn't exist when shooting on Return to Mayberry started. The Andy Griffith show was shot at the 40-acre studio lot in Culver City, California, which was the hub of Desilu Productions. The 40-acre studio was bought by Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz, co-owner of Desilu Productions, from Howard Hughes in 1955. For the next 10 years, the studio served as the location of several famous television productions, including The Untouchables, Miami Undercover, Star Trek, Mission Impossible, and The Real McCoys. However, as the studio continued changing its owners with time, it felt out of use and was ultimately bulldozed in 1976 and sold to the industry. Thus, when production on Return to Mayberry started a decade later, the original studio didn't exist, and thus the town of Los Olivos, California, doubled as Mayberry, with the Grand Avenue serving as the town square. To replicate the courthouse that existed in the original set, a small park was built at the corner of Grand and Alamo Pintado. Throughout the movie, you'll see a flagpole in the middle of the square. This flagpole is a veterans memorial that was built in Los Olivos after World War I and was not part of the original set. If you look carefully, you'll easily be able to spot the differences between the original set and the new Return to Mayberry set. The difference is particularly evident in the closing shot when Andy and Barney raised the American flag on a street that was never shown in the original TV series. Aunt Bee did not reprise her part in this reunion movie. Frances Elizabeth Bavier was an American stage and television actress who played the role of Auntie Bee in eight seasons of The Andy Griffith Show and two seasons of Mayberry RFD. Bavier did not reprise her role in Return to Mayberry. After Mayberry RFD went off air, Bavier moved to a small town in North Carolina. When Return to Mayberry was conceptualized, Bavier was offered to reprise her part. However, she declined the role. Some people believe her health didn't permit her to start shooting again, while others believe she was happily retired and didn't want to go back to acting. It's for this reason that in Return to Mayberry, Aunt Bee was shown deceased, and her absence was explained through a scene in which Andy goes to a cemetery where she's buried. Though Aunt Bee was not seen in the reunion movie, her voice was often heard. Janet Waldo, the American radio and voice actress of Josie and the Pussycats fame, lent her voice to the character of Aunt Bee in the film. Here's another fun fact. Other than Francis Bavier, Eleanor Donahue, who played the role of Ellie Walker, and Jack Burns, who played the role of Warren Ferguson, are two other actors who did not reprise their roles in this reunion movie. Similarly, Ken Berry, who played the role of Sam Jones in four episodes of The Andy Griffith Show and 78 episodes of Mayberry RFD, could not make an appearance in the film due to his commitment to Mama's family. Before we move on to our next fun fact about Return to Mayberry, we want to remind you to take a moment to like and subscribe to our channel, and click on the notification bell to stay updated on all the new videos we publish every week. Gomer and Goober appear together for the third time in the film. Gomer Pyle was a simple and friendly person who worked at the Wally's filling station and slept in the back room of the filling station to save money to go to medical school. His thick accent and warm-hearted nature made him an instant favorite, 
Surprised often by the simplest of things, he provided comic relief to the entire setup and became popular owing to his catchphrases such as golly and surprise, surprise, surprise. The character was played by Jim Neighbors. In season three of The Andy Griffith Show, the audiences were introduced to Goober Pyle, Gomer's cousin, in the episode Fun Girl. The character was played by George Lindsay. After Gomer left Mayberry to join the Marine Corps, Goober took his position at the gas filling station. Though Gomer and Goober were cousins, they weren't shown as very close in any of the episodes of The Andy Griffith Show and Mayberry RFD. As a matter of fact, the two appeared together only once on The Andy Griffith Show in the episode Fun Girl. They also made an appearance together once in the episode A Visit from Cousin Goober on Gomer Pyle USMC. In return to Mayberry, the cousins were united for the third time and were shown to be closer than ever. It was also the last time Lindsay appeared on TV as Goober. Return to Mayberry also marked George Lindsay's last appearance on television as Goober, except for the time when Nashville Now, a show on the Nashville network, decided to dedicate an entire episode to celebrating the Andy Griffith show. Many members of the original cast came together to perform a short skit for the audience. Other than Lindsay, Hal Smith, who played the role of Otis Campbell, and Betty Lynn, who played Thelma Lou, also made an appearance on the show Nashville Now. The three slipped back into their characters for a live performance, and that's the last time George Lindsay was seen as Goober. Though Lindsay spent a considerable part of his life playing variations of the character Goober Pyle, not many people know he had a bachelor's degree in bioscience from the University of North Alabama, and taught for a year at the Hazel Green High School in Alabama before being accepted by the American Theater Wing in 1956. Barney switches from Ford to Chevy. Barney Fife, the town deputy sheriff, who covered his insecurities with an external display of bravado and often went around trying to impress people with his knowledge on various subjects, even when his expertise was limited, often won laughs through his incompetence. Barney was a regular during the first five seasons of The Andy Griffith Show and made guest appearances in the following three seasons. He also appeared in the first episode of Mayberry RFD. The character was played by comic actor Don Knotts. Don's portrayal of the character won him five Primetime Emmy Awards. Throughout The Andy Griffith Show, Barney drove around in cars made by Ford. In one of the episodes of The Andy Griffith Show, Barney identifies his car as a 1954 Ford. However, in the movie Return to Mayberry, Barney is shown driving around a 1981 Chevy Malibu. The background story was, after Andy moved to Cleveland, the town switched its Mayberry police vehicle supplier to Chevy from Ford. Ron Howard's dad played a guest role in the movie. Actor Ron Howard played the role of Opie Taylor on The Andy Griffith Show, Gomer Pyle USMC, and Mayberry RFD. He also made an appearance in Return to Mayberry. Ron's brother Clint played the role of Leon on The Andy Griffith Show. Due to the involvement of his two sons in the show, Rance Howard, father of Ron and Clint, was often present on the sets of The Andy Griffith Show. In fact, he also made guest appearances on The Andy Griffith Show. In total, he appeared in four different episodes, and you may easily remember him as the governor's driver in the episode Barney and the Governor. Rance even co-wrote one of the episodes and appeared in Return to Mayberry as the preacher who marries Barney Fife and Thelma Lou. If you're enjoying this video, like and subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay updated about all such fun and interesting videos we regularly publish. Don Knotts' daughter played a small role in the movie. Don Knotts, who played Barney Fife on The Andy Griffith Show, was an accomplished actor who played many memorable characters. Other than The Andy Griffith Show, he was also well recognized as Ralph Furley from the supremely popular sitcom Three's Company. Don Knotts also appeared in many comedy films, such as The Ghost and Mr. Chicken, The Apple Dumpling Gang, No Deposit, No Return, and The Incredible Mr. Limpet. Not many people know this, but Don Knotts' daughter Karen Knotts followed in her father's footsteps and became a sag after actor and stand up comedian. She played a small role in the film Return to Mayberry, where she played the role of Opie's receptionist. Andy and Helen Taylor's baby made no appearance in the film. In the episode Andy's Baby, Andy and Helen make a visit to Mayberry for the christening of their son, Andrew Samuel Taylor Jr. In the same episode, they ask Sam Jones if he would agree to be Samuel Taylor's godfather, which upsets Emmett, Goober, and Howard. By the end of the episode, Samuel Taylor has four godfathers. At the time of the filming of Return to Mayberry, Samuel Taylor Jr. should have been 17 years old. However, the film makes no mention of the boy. Hubacher brothers are out of prison and running a hardware store. 
In episode 11 of season 1 of The Andy Griffith Show, which aired on December 19, 1960, Andy and Barney are shown sitting together and reading holiday cards. One of the cards is shown to have come from Hubacher Brothers, a trio of brothers who were put behind bars by Andy and Barney, but still had friendly relations with the duo. The card reads, Greetings from the State Prison. The Hubacher brothers may have been notorious in the beginning, but it looks like they reformed themselves over the next two decades, turning into fine businessmen. Nothing else can explain the origin of Hubacher's hardware store in Return to Mayberry. The Andy Griffith Show and Mayberry RFD exposed us to the joys of country life and made us fall in love with warm-hearted and friendly simpletons who found big joy in little things. Return to Mayberry was the audience's final chance to enjoy life in the fictional town of Mayberry. Now we'd like to hear from you. Was Return to Mayberry a suitable end for the series, or did it leave you wanting more? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, share it with a friend who likes these characters. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Facts First videos.